Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, wonderful. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning to learn more about the Transportation Benefits Equity Amendment Act of 2020. This is an info session for employers. Over the course of the next hour, we're going to cover some basic information, um, give you a little bit more context, and um, go over how GoDCGo, which is a DDOT initiative, can help you become compliant with this new law. The district has two um, plans, the Sustainable DC and Move DC goals, which are uh, which lay out some of the sustainability goals for the city. And I just quickly wanted to share some data about um, how people commuted in the district around 2018. And here you can see that a large portion of the commuting population took public transportation to work as well as bike, teleworked, carpooled, walked, and, and sometimes rode a taxi, took the taxi or motorcycle, but a large portion, about 34%, also drove alone. And the two goals in and the goal in sustainability, sustainable DC and move DC goals aims to reduce that portion of the drive alone rate from 34% to down to 25%. So the goal is to reduce the drive alone rate by 2032 down to one quarter of all commuting trips and increase the mode share for biking, walking, and transit to 75% of all commuter trips in the district. Um, to that purpose, one way we can achieve this is by um, enrolling more people in commuter benefits. And I just wanted to cover what, quickly what commuter benefits are. Um, first, there are the traditional transportation fringe benefits that are in the um, federal tax code and our IRS approved. These are your traditional pre-tax deductions towards public transit and van pooling, um, which currently stands at 280 per month. There's also the bike voucher, which is $20 per month, but as you know, this has been paused until about 2024, although that may change in the near future. In addition to federal uh, transportation uh, benefits, there are also other things that employers can do to help their employees commute to work more easily, faster, and more affordably, including flexible arrival and departure times, telework policies, and amenities like showers and lockers at, at work. So together with increasing access to pre-tax transportation benefits and reducing the number of free and subsidized parking spaces at employer sites and doing outreach and marketing through our GoDCGo program, we aim to empower commuters to choose transit, biking, and walking in the district, and thereby helping us shift the mode closer to reducing that drive alone rate. As you are aware, we have a new law on the books called the Transportation Benefits Equity Amendment Act of 2020. This is a, an amendment to the DC Sustainable Omnibus Amendment Act of 2014. Um, and that law expanded pre-tax access to um, commuter benefits, and this new law specifically addresses employers that offer free and subsidized parking. There are three options to comply with this new law. The first option is called the Clean Air Transportation Fringe Benefit. Under this option, if a covered employer offers a parking benefit to an employee, the covered employer shall offer the same employee a clean air transportation fringe benefit in the amount equal or greater than the monthly market value of the parking benefit that is offered to the employee. For example, if your parking benefit is around $200 per month, you must then offer the equivalent value of $200 per month toward public transportation or van pooling, or actually also the bicycling benefit, but that's been paused as I mentioned earlier for now. Um, and if an employee's um, public transportation and van pooling cost is less than the $200 per month, for example, then the employer must offer um, the, the difference to the employee in the form of additional compensation or increased contribution to the employee's health coverage. The second option for compliance is the clean air transportation compliance fee. Under this option, 
an employer can choose to um, instead instead of implementing a parking cash out program, for example, they can choose to pay uh, $100 per employee per month to the district government um, instead. And this will be um, payable to the order of the DC treasurer and um, a proof of payment will need to be provided to DDOT. Option three is a transportation demand management plan. A TDM plan is essentially a document that lays out your organization's plan for which uh, TDM strategies and amenities you aim to implement in order to reduce your drive alone rate to your work site. As per this option, an employer choosing to implement a TDM plan will need to reduce their drive alone, their SOV rate, uh, or sorry, drive alone rate by 10% year over year until a quarter of their employees or less are commuting to work um, in a car or driving alone to work. And this includes for hire vehicles as well. This law is applicable to all employers with 20 or more employees in the, in the district, except of course, federal government. Um, these, this includes all your full-time employees and part-time employees who are performing 50% or more of their work in the District of Columbia. There are some exceptions to this law as well. This law does not apply to employers who lease the parking before October 1, 2020 and until the end of their lease term. But once your current lease term expires, regardless of options for renewal, this law will then apply to you. The law does not apply to employers who owned or continue to own their parking before October 1, 2020. It also does not apply to organizations who are party to a campus plan before October 1, 2020 and until the current term of the, of the campus plan. There are also additional conditions in the rulemaking document in regards to the campus plan. Uh, it must be approved by DDOT and it must reduce um, um, single occupant vehicle trips over time to actually qualify for the exemption. Um, employers who do not offer a free or subsidized parking benefit to their employees um, also are not subject to compliance under this law. So if you do not offer free or subsidized parking, you are not subject to this law. As part of the law, covered employers, those offering free or subsidized parking, must report to DDOT. Employers who choose to implement compliance option one, the clean air transportation fringe benefit, must submit a report to DDOT by January 15, 2023, and every two years thereafter, with specific information, um, including how many employees are offered the parking benefit, how many are using the parking benefit, how many are participating in transit benefits, and so on. Um, a more detailed form will be available uh, uh, to, for employers to complete later this year. And employers who choose to implement a TDM plan will also need to submit a report to DDOT by January 15, 2023, and every year thereafter. Um, and the report will include um, results of the commuter survey. And DDOT will provide a template survey um, because we, we need employers to answer specific questions. Um, and the survey should um, show a 10% reduction in driving trips year over year. Again, so working towards that 25% threshold for drive alone trips. One item I wanna mention here quickly too is that DDOT um, can levy fines under the civil infractions um, law um, when employers are not, when covered employers are not uh, reporting or implementing one of the three options. As an employer, what can you do next? Um, our recommendation is to become familiar with the legislation and the rulemaking and um, read the information that we are going to share after this presentation and that my colleague Bill will cover in a minute with GoDCGo. Um, then you can work directly with GoDCGo on implementing a compliance option that fits best for your organization. Um, once you have that in place, we recommend providing that information to covered employees so they can apply for those benefits. 
and receive those benefits. Um, and we can help you throughout the year to get you ready to report to DDOT by January 15, 2023. And now I will turn it over to Will from GoDCGo. Thanks, Marina. Hey, everyone, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about who we are at GoDCGo and how we can specifically assist your organization uh, with compliance with this law. And next slide, please. Alrighty, uh, so GoDCGo is an initiative of the District Department of Transportation. We work to promote sustainable transportation options uh, in a variety of ways. Uh, I'm part of the employer team, so I work with employers on you know, benefits programs, on compliance with uh, relevant legislation, uh, and all of our assistance is uh, you know, complimentary, completely free. Um, but I'll get into a little bit about what we can specifically assist you with. Uh, with this law. All right, so relevant to the Transportation Benefits Equity Amendment Act, uh, first and foremost, we can help you figure out if your organization needs to comply, uh, provide guidance on which compliance option might be the best fit for your organization and talk through the pros and cons of each one. Uh, if you decide to do a clean air transportation fringe benefit, we can help you with figuring out what that amount uh, of the benefit would look like and how you might implement that uh, in your organization. Develop commuter surveys uh, for compliance and reporting, provide materials that can assist with compliance or more broadly with commuter benefits provision. Uh, and if you do decide to create a transportation demand management plan, uh, that was the third compliance option, we can work with you uh, to create that. Uh, so I've included my contact information below. Um, we also have an online calendar available where you can select appointments and schedule them in advance. Uh, so I encourage you to reach out if you have any questions uh, about the law. And next slide, please. And we do have two upcoming webinars that get into the details about compliance. Uh, the first one is in a little over a week. That's going to be on February 10th at 11 a.m. We'll be talking about the ins and outs of the clean air transportation fringe benefit. That was the first compliance option. Uh, and a week later on February 17th at 11 a.m., we're going to be talking about uh, how to create a TDM plan for compliance uh, if you do decide uh, to go with that option. Uh, and these webinars will also be recorded and slides will be available online. So if you're not able to make that particular session, uh, that information will still be available. All right, and actually, if you could go back two slides, we had a materials slide, I believe. Oh, never mind. My mistake. All right. Um, and we have the contact info included on the next page of both myself uh, and Marina from DDOT. Um, but right now, we wanted to open this up for Q and A. Uh, we do have a link to the text of the law here, as well as a link to the employer page on the GoDCGo website, which has a variety of resources. Uh, we will have a pretty comprehensive frequently asked questions document that will be posted to the GoDCGo website shortly. Um, but if you have any questions, I would ask that you please submit them via the Q&A box uh, in the bottom right hand corner. That'll send questions directly to myself and Marina, and I will read them out uh, so that everyone can hear them. So if you have any questions, please use that Q&A box in the bottom right. And I'll give it a few seconds for questions to come in, and then we'll get started. Uh, so the first question, will these slides be emailed out after the presentation? Uh, yes, both slides and a recording will be included, uh, and we will be sending out a, um, a recap email as well that includes further information. Our next question is, can you please confirm that letting employees pay for parking through pre-tax deductions is not considered a subsidized benefit? That was pre-tax employee paid parking benefits. 
Um, yes, that's correct. Um, when you're using your pre-tax deduction, it's not considered a subsidized benefit. However, if the parking value that the employee is paying at the garage or on site is below market value, that is considered a um, that is considered um, a covered event, and the employer would need to comply with uh, with the law. All right, our next question is, how is the not matching uh, the parking benefit with equivalent transportation benefits calculated? If parking benefit is X and transit pass is Y, then would employers pay employees the difference between the two as the contribution to salary or healthcare uh, contributions? And that was for the fringe benefit, I believe. Um, I am going to have to get back to you on, on this question, um, and then we need to follow up with the individual asking it just to better understand what is um, what is being asked. Uh, and we will also follow up individually uh, with some of these questions. Uh, uh, so the next question, does this law apply to Maryland employers with employees that live or remotely work in D.C.? Um, I think it applies to employees who spend 50% or more of their time working in the district. Um, and we can follow up with our legal to clarify if in, if it applies in this case. If employees pay the full cost of parking on a pre tax basis, we are okay. Uh, that was previously answered if the pre tax uh, employee. Parking question. The pre tax transportation fringe benefit is not considered a subsidy because right. that is coming out of the employee's paycheck. Right. Uh, all right. Our next question um, The law applies to employers with 20 or more employees, but uh, so the question here is. If an employer does not offer parking benefits, even if they have more than 20 employees, they do not need to comply. Uh, I can answer that one. Uh, to be required to comply, you would need to meet the three requirements of having 20 or more employees, off having leased parking, and then offering parking benefits. Uh, so if you did not offer parking benefits, but had more than 20 employees, you would not need to worry about compliance. Yes, and I just want to clarify that um, a parking benefit is free or subsidized parking or parking offered below market value. Our next question is, what is the frequency for employees to opt in slash out of this? Is this monthly or annually? I can answer that one as well. Uh, Employees who choose the clean air transportation fringe benefit, they complete a form, which is available online, which estimates the amount of the benefit they will use. Uh, they can revise that form on a yearly basis. Uh, our next question is, which path for compliance do you anticipate most employers will take? Marina, I'll toss that one to you. Sure. Um, it really depends on the organization um, for employers offering free or subsidized parking. Um, we think that most employers will choose option one um, or option three. I'm not sure that many people will opt to pay the fee, but there will might certainly be a few who prefer that path as well. And I just want to reiterate that an employer who is offering free or subsidized parking and who decides to do away and discontinue offering for your subsidized parking would then no longer be subject to compliance with the law because they wouldn't be offering for your subsidized parking. So that's also another way of complying is simply to stop offering for your subsidized parking and have your employees pay um, the full rate and or 
you know, not drive to work at all. And I would add something onto that as well. Um, I really think it's worth noting that choosing that first compliance option, offering the clean air transportation fringe benefit really is fantastic from a benefits provision perspective, because you are ensuring that all of your employees, regardless of their um, personal transportation uh, preferences, they're all receiving that same benefit. So you're giving them more flexibility, um, which I think, you know, from a benefits perspective is something that is really good to do. Uh, continuing with questions. Uh, where can I register for the 210 webinar? Uh, the link on the previous page uh, has a link to the registration page for that. We will also be including that in our follow up email. The links to both of those webinars. How can we sign up for regular updates on this law and notices? Sorry, just scrolling down here. Uh, notices on when we should complete future reporting, et cetera. Um, Marina, the question was, is there a place to sign up for regular updates on the law and information on when um, clients is due? Um, the best way is to join the Go DC Go employer newsletter where, um, and we send out monthly updates via that newsletter. Um, if you will include a link for um, signing up in our follow up email. Yeah, we can include the sign up link to the newsletter in our follow up. Absolutely. Our next question is. We do not currently offer financial support to our DC employees. Do we need to have a plan started to submit? Uh, do we need to submit a TDM plan where we're not required? Uh, if by financial support, you mean parking benefits, if you don't provide parking benefits to your employees, then you would not have to comply with the law. Uh, and again, parking benefits are defined as, uh, you know, a direct employer paid subsidy that leads to free or below market rate parking. Uh, so if you do not offer that, then you don't have to worry about compliance. Our next question is, what is the cash out component? Uh, parking cash out refers to the first compliance option, the clean air transportation fringe benefit. It's the term used for that concept where you exchange a parking benefit for an alternative uh, benefit. Continuing on. If we already have less than 25% of our employees driving downtown, are we compliant? So if you have fewer than 25% of employees commuting by car, you would still, but you still met the other requirements for compliance. That is, you have more than 20 employees, you offer parking benefits and you lease your parking. You would still have to comply. However, if you chose the transportation demand management plan option, you would still need to complete the survey associated with it. You would still need to create the plan and submit the plan. But if you already had under 25% driving, um, you know, you'd meet that requirement for the, the TDM plan. So you, would, you still would need to complete the compliance process with the law, regardless of whether you meet that uh, end criteria. Yes, and to add to that, if you are a covered employer, you still need to submit that report to DDOT come January 2023. Uh, if we no longer have an office in DC, do we need to do anything? Um, Marina, I'll throw that one to you. Um, I think we skipped a few questions. Uh, that's the next question on my list. Can you please repeat it? Yeah. Um, so if we no longer have an office in DC, do we need to do anything related to the law? Um, so again, we need to go back to what is a covered employer. Um, let me pull that up here really fast. So 
So if you are a district employer with 20 or more employees, um, if you have 20 or more employees in the district, and they spend 50% or more of their time in the District of Columbia, then you'd still be considered a covered employer. So if these two conditions apply, then you would still be considered a covered employer, regardless of if you have a physical location. All right. Our next question is to confirm if an employer is currently in a lease agreement for their parking, which was entered into pre October 2020, the law does not impact them until the end of their current lease term, correct? Will, do you want to take that one? Sure. Uh, so, in the law, um, there is the provision that if you have your, if you entered into your lease for parking prior to October 2020, now that's the date stipulated in the law, uh, then you will not need to implement your compliance measure, if you're required to comply, that is, uh, until the end of your current lease term, regardless of whether there are any provisions in the lease for uh, automatic extensions or uh, rollovers. Uh, once you reach that end of the original lease that you signed, you will need to uh, implement the measure. Uh, if you are required to comply. Right. Scrolling down here, our next question is. If an employer provides an equal benefit for parking and Metro under the new law, uh, what change would need to happen? Um, well, if you. If you meet the requirements for compliance, there's three criteria. You would need to implement a compliance measure. Um, so you would you would still need to implement one of those three compliance options, even if you offer uh, those equal commuter benefits that you mentioned. We offer free parking at lots that we do not own. Um, and it is not a subsidized benefit, does this apply to us? If you are, if the free parking is free because the employer is paying for a cost that the employees would otherwise have to pay, uh, then that would count as a parking benefit and you would need to comply with the law provided you meet the other requirements. That being said, um, if these lots are privately owned by your company uh, or are public parking, then you would not need to apply. You would only need to do so if you were leasing from leasing those uh, private spaces. Uh, the our next question is. A go to go e bulletin said that uh, mentioned a figure of $175 or higher if uh, their employer opted for the clean air transportation fringe benefit. I don't see that figure in the law or other materials. Please clarify. The $175 value is listed in the law as the absolute minimum value for the benefit. That's the absolute base value that you can use if other conditions are not met. Uh, so that's used for calculating market value, which is then used in the creation of the, um, using the provision of the fringe benefit. Um, so that's what that $175 value is. We are building owners and we have a garage. We lease the garage to Colonial Parking uh, for management, are we exempt for spaces that we provide to our employees? That is a great question. I think we will have to look into that and follow up after uh, this. That's a little, little complex, uh, but we will get back to you on that. Uh, what if employees 
are remote in such numbers that there are fewer than 25% of the current workforce commuting into the office. Um, so even if you have fewer than 25% currently driving to work, you still would need to implement a compliance option. Uh, if you chose that TDM plan option, you would still need to complete all of the associated paperwork uh, and so create a plan, submit the plan before your uh, organization would be considered in compliance. We provide all staff who choose to enroll in transit benefits, the full $280 a month available. We have limited parking spaces that are valued at $300 a month. Participants pay $140 a month. Are we in compliance? Uh, it sounds like you would not currently be in compliance um, because you are providing parking benefits. Um, so if you meet those three base criteria, that is more than 20 employees providing parking benefits uh, for parking that you lease, you would need to comply with the law and implement one of the three options. What if after offering this, employees still want to drive slash park does this impact compliance? No, it does not. Um, if, if you choose the clean air transportation fringe benefit, all the employer is required to do is offer the benefit. Whether or not an employee uh, does or does not want to take the benefit, that does not impact compliance. Uh, the next question is about to tax parking and providing a $50 a month subsidy. Um, the subsidy would be a parking benefit. So if you met the other criteria, your organization would need to comply. What happens if an employer does not, what if at, this question is about TDM plans. What happens if an employer chooses a TDM plan but does not accomplish the 10% per year reduction in vehicle trips? Marina, I think that would be best answered by you. Um, yes, there are a lot of details in the rulemaking about the specific next steps if an employer does not reach the 10% reduction year over year. Um, but there's an opportunity to um, continue implementing your TDM plan and work with DDOT to correct, make the correction. If, however, the employer is still not meeting the target after a certain amount of time, then DDOT reserves the right to um, uh, to basically ask them to do the first compliance option and or pay a fee. All right. And I would recommend for everyone to read the, read the rulemaking document, which will provide a link to after the presentation. It has very specific um, outlines of um, how the law it will be implemented and some additional conditions for it. Absolutely. All right, continuing down the list here. If our employees park in garages or around DC, but not a specific garage, and we usually refund the expense, are we required to comply with the law? Um. The answer, I think, for this would be yes, you are still required to comply because you are subsidizing your employees' parking and or offering free parking. Um, the, um, there are some additional kind of qualifications for this, though, in the rulemaking, and we can follow up with more information on this. I just need to read the specific section first. All right. Um. So if an employer owns their parking, are they required to file anything with the district to prove that? Um, yes, we will need to know the date um, of when you started owning your parking. And that will be part of the regular report, in, report um, to be filed in January, on January 15. Uh, the next question was about employees filling out the fringe benefit form. 
uh, yes, employees who want to accept a clean air transportation fringe benefit would need to complete a form that will be available online uh, that allows them to estimate the amount they will use for transportation costs. And then employers would use that estimate to determine if additional compensation is needed or not. Can you clarify the start date of when covered employers must begin compliance? You will need to, the law is already in fact, so technically, People need to be compliant. Um, however, you do have about the rest of the year until January 15, which is the absolute last day, you can um, report compliance to DDOT. Um, we are still working on um, some administrative items uh, to make this fully operational, and um, the portal and more information about the report and how to file it will be available on DDOT's website in the coming months. Um, so I encourage you to check back and we'll also communicate that to everyone joining us today. All right, uh, we have a couple more questions here. Does the law apply to parking companies that provide free parking to their employees? So I think that would depend on whether the parking company owns the parking or not. If you own your parking, then you don't need to worry about the law. Uh, it only impacts parking that is leased. Uh, so if the parking company was, you know, providing free parking at at least, uh, then you would need to comply with the law. Um, but if you own it and you're just giving it to your employees, then the law does not apply to that situation. We have a question about individuals with a hybrid schedule. If they drive slash park at the office three times a week and I have to scroll back down here. Um, I see the question. Well, I'm just going to read it out. Um, what about individuals? What about individuals currently with a hybrid schedule? If they drive and park at the office three times a week instead of five times a week, they have reduced their driving parking. If we pay for monthly parking, would we be in compliance? The answer is no. Um, if you are paying um, for free or subsidized, or rather, if you are offering free or subsidized parking, you are not in compliance. And you would, um, and if you have 20 or more employees, this law would apply to you. Uh, so if employees are providing a parking or full transit benefit, does it matter? if the transit benefits the particular employee gets are less than the parking cost. Um, so, I mean, if in compliance with the law, um, the law stipulates a particular process by which the amount of the clean air transportation fringe benefit would be calculated. Um, so it provides a pretty clear process for how that should happen. Um, we can also follow up with this particular question after uh, in greater detail. All right, continuing down. Does this law still apply if parking benefits are restricted to a particular group of employees? So not the full set of employees. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. So the law applies if you offer free subsidized parking to your employees, even if you just offer it to a subset of your employees. Um, the the focus is really more on the offering free and subsidized parking versus the like who's eligible. Will, are you still there? Yes, uh, continuing down here, we're just reading through a couple others. There are several that we've already answered, so I'm jumping around a bit here. Um, 
We are currently working remotely and stopped paying for monthly parking. We will probably return to the office on a part-time basis. If we reimburse employees for parking rather than pay for monthly spots, do we still have to offer cash out? Um, if you are reimbursing employees, that would count as a parking benefit. Um, so provided you meet the other requirements, you would need to comply with the law. Um, if we offered a parking subsidy in the spring for those who return to work in person, uh, once you return to the office, would we need to, when do we need to report that new subsidy in 2022 or after? Uh, so that would be included in your reporting due January 15th, 2023. Moving on. I do want to clarify one item. Um, and thank you so much for bringing this up. Someone says, my reading of the law suggests that the employer just has to have over 20 employees overall, and they don't have to all be in DC for the law to apply to them. Um, I will verify this information, but um, um, I think that sounds about right. Um, the condition is that as long as you have 20 or more employees, this applies to you. Uh, we had a question about, we do not have a lease, but we uh, cover costs associated with public parking. Uh, so this law does not apply to parking that is privately owned or public. If our employees park in garages or around, uh, okay, we already covered that. And we have two more here. If our building offers reduced parking, if our building offers reduced parking for tenants, but our company does not subsidize the parking, would this law apply to us? Unless your company is subsidizing parking, that is providing parking benefits, you would not need to apply because you are not the one offering the benefit. And just to clarify, there is no reporting required prior to January 15th. 2023, that is correct. And our last question is, we have 50 employees using smart benefits. If we have only five to 10 going into the office and only two are using parking, does this apply to us? Um, you would have to refer back to the requirements of the law. And if you meet the three uh, requirements for compliance, then you would need to comply. And uh, we have one more question. Uh, in summary, it only applies to parking in DC if the employer leases the spots and gives some sort of subsidy. Uh, but all DC employers with 20 plus employees have to. So this is a question about reporting requirements. Um, do all employers with over 20 employees have to report, even if they do not offer parking benefits? employees. Um, I think we need to verify that. My understanding is that unless you are offering for your subsidized parking, you don't need to report, but let me clarify that and get back to you. All right. So those were all of the questions we received. Uh, if we did not get to your question, um, please feel free to reach out to me individually afterwards, and I'd be happy to address it. Uh, and if your question was one of the ones that we noted that we would need to do further research on, uh, we will follow up with you uh, after this webinar concludes. Um, so, Marina, I will pass it back to you if there's anything else you want to say. Um, yes, there's one final question. Is this session being recorded and can we obtain a copy? Yes, it is. And we will be sharing um, this information um, after the meeting and posting it online, most likely. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We really appreciate your time and thoughtful questions. Um, it's been a pleasure to 
share this information with you and please reach out to Will or myself if you have any other items that we were not able to address today. Thank you and have a good day.